I was rolling around a lot of things in my head as I was listening to people because, okay, 10 minutes is a long time. This isn't a public execution. And uh, what's the third thing I'm supposed to remember? I can't. Um, uh, I grew up in a place that didn't really have much of a sense of itself. I mean, it didn't have a very high opinion of itself. It was, uh, it was just a small Ontario town, village, let's say, um, Millbrook, um, and uh, farm people that lived around it, including my family. And um, one of the things as I was sitting here just listening to you talk was I just kept thinking and hearing the people from way back when I was doing interview, I think it was for the farm show in 1996, saying, why do you want to talk to us? Like, why do you want to talk to us? Like, we have nothing really. Why would you want to get our opinion on anything? Which I found kind of interesting. Like, why is it like that in this country? And why would it be like that in a rural area <clears throat> where somehow it's been inherited that that people that live in villages and small towns and rural areas don't really matter and have nothing really to contribute of, of note. So that really touched me and I think that's probably more than anything, because I also am really interested in the underdog, uh, in what kind of compelled me to do what I've done. And I say compel, I, I think I choose that word you know, carefully because I have been compelled and obsessed and have been doing this for an awfully long time and, and other than I don't think I've been diagnosed as being psychotic or anything, but I think it's, it's like for somebody to be that compelled and that obsessed over that many years on a project, if, it, if it's not something wrong with you, then, uh, then once, once hopefully it's, it's not. But uh, I, I, just, I just really wanted the stories of where I grew up to be communicated to a larger uh, audience. To, and, and I've been fortunate that these stories are now being communicated to an incredibly large audience, and you might say right across the country that we've touched people right across the country. Um, I grew up in a farm, as I said. Uh, my mom died in 1990. I inherited the family farm. I had a background in, uh, in doing different kinds of theater. Ian, I'm sure we'll talk a bit about some of the theater involved in Peterborough before the fourth line started. Uh, work out in Western Canada um, with a lot of companies doing new work, like Theater Network in Edmonton, uh, Workshop West, um, Northern Light Theater. Had some great years in, in Edmonton in the early 80s. I worked uh, with Murray Schaefer uh, doing his large-scale outdoor productions, like The Greatest Show that was in here in Peterborough in the 80s. So to me, there were a number of factors that kind of I had experienced that kind of once I had the opportunity with the farm that kind of came together so I could actually make something, make something happen there. And I really did literally have a moment. It was in uh, 1991 after I'd done a show at the Edmonton Fringe where I came uh, to the farm, looked in the run-down, decrepit, uh, falling-to-pieces barnyard and, and environs and everything, and I saw these scenes from a play I had written called The Cabin Blazers, and I saw those scenes literally being staged and how they would actually happen. And it was basically that moment and having uh, the confidence to kind of move forward and then the incredible support that I had of people from this community, uh, people like Jerome Ackhurst, uh, P.J. Thomas, uh, Francis Winches, a lot of the artists and actors that were working in the theatre here in Peterborough who got involved, uh, then, okay, let's add on to that, let's add on to that all the community of volunteers, the people that lived in Cavan and Millbrook and wanted to help see this thing go. Um, the, the fair board who lent us uh, bleachers to, to, to put in that decrepit barnyard, uh, the Lions Club who came and did a, a dinners there uh, after the shows and, and, and made a lot of noise during the shows setting up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, get that truck out of there! Yeah, we gotta get out! We got stuck here! We get. You know, meanwhile, yeah, somebody's trying to do a monologue on stage and uh, anyway. See, that's a funny story. <laughs> but not as bad as introducing a pig, trying to introduce a pig at the beginning of a performance one night. <laughs> Pigs are really hard to corral and control, and they screw really loud when <laughs> you're chasing them backstage. Um, so it was always a real juxtaposition of a lot of factors. There was um, the community there, and all these artists, and the people that the stories were based on, and it was an amazing juxtaposition of forces. So we call it community-based professional theatre. It's truly that, and our balance has always been the professionalism, the community side of it. Um, 
And our ideas for plays continually come up and emerge out of the community. So I'm at an opening night in 2001 for, I think, the fifth production of the Cabin Blazers, and a man comes up to me and says, you know, my mother was never able to hug me, and, you know, I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about this, this background that she had coming as a, an orphan from England, you know, in, in, you know, 1905 or 6 or something. And, and that was the Bernardo story. And that's where that, that's where that essence came from. So our, our, our ideas tend to, literally, I mean, this isn't an advertisement for Fourth Line. They actually do tend to come right out of the community. And, and it's partly listening, and it's partly uh, being open to those stories. That, that that man said to me, you know, in 1996, well, why do you want to talk to me about my stories? Like, they're not important. But they are important, because the stories of a place are, are like key to the place, and they're key to people feeling like they can connect and understand each other. Um, when I talked about juxtapositions, imagine 1992, and imagine some of the artists there standing right beside the local farmers and the local shopkeepers, and imagine how different they were. You know, I can think of particular examples of actors and their lifestyle, let's say, and, uh, and some of the local people. But they agreed to disagree, and they worked together in creating this incredible, uh, this incredible project, which is now we've created, um, I don't know, 30-ish kind of plays based on local history. We've got seven or eight in development. Um, uh, it's great seeing Bo here because Bo is hopefully working, well, working for, on a project. I mean, just want to talk about projects. You know, that's all I want to really talk about. Uh, Neil Young said, what's your favorite album? Well, what's the next one I do? It's, it's really like you're just obsessed with something and you want to get the story and then you want to go on to the next thing. I'm working on one with Ian right now about, the, about First World War. It's just very exciting, and, and, and we, as we've developed our new play development program, and who's going to cut me off here in 10 minutes? You're, you're going to do that, right? Yeah, okay. That's a gesture I was told not to use in my martial arts. When you finish something, I used to go like that, and I said, don't go like that. That's actually too violent a gesture for the end of a, an exercise. Say just, you know. um, we have a new play development program where we, we match playwrights to stories. And we start with something called a community reminiscence, where we gather people together to talk about a story or an issue. Most recent example could be, would be, uh, a playwright, Maya Ardell, talking to people who were affected by the Quaker Oats uh, fire of explosion of 1916. So talking to descendants of people who were killed in that fire or affected by that. Alex Posh Golden talking to people from the Pontypool Jewish community about the resorts that existed there in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, Liana Brody's working on it, working for us right now on a play about wind turbines and all that stuff that's going on in Southern Ontario. So, so we're gathering people for that. Um, and I've been fortunate to be able to travel quite a bit to, to Ireland, to the UK, to, to research projects. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big operation. The hardest part of it <laughs> is raising the money every year. The second part is hard of it, uh, hardest part of it is making it good art, making it excellent art once you've raised the money. And really, you know, we're, I'm heading into a production right now with 65, 60 to 70 performers, two-thirds of whom are volunteers, and I want that to be a wonderful work of art and very professional, and it's on me and all the artists to make it, make it happen and make it actually great art and great community development at the same time. So, uh, okay, we started in 1992, it's, it's 2013, we're still going, so... Uh, I hope we've contributed to the arts in, 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 uh, in this area. And I really, I really, you know, this is not a commercial. I thank the people of this area for their help. It's been wonderful. So that's all I'm going to say.